What is up guys, it's your boy Solheim here, back with another Wrath of the Lich King Classic preparation video. So, so far I've been making a couple of preparation videos, highly based on the economical side of things, aka investments and things to buy or sell before Wrath Classic comes out, but today we are taking more of a general look at Wrath of the Lich King, and talking about things that you want to complete before Wrath comes out. Basically, it is a checklist of things to do before Wrath actually comes out, and while I'm probably not going to mention all of the things to have on this checklist, I will mention the ones I'm personally looking at, and the things that I think are the most important. Before we get into this video, let me know what your checklist looks like in the comments down below, and while you're down there, make sure to check out my Wrath Classic Gold Guide, which is linked in the video description and the pinned comment. This is a gold guide that, that I've made specifically for Wrath Classic, with the purpose of teaching you everything you need to know about gold in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Whether that be gold farming, flipping items, crafting professions, investments, you name it. Wrath has so much gold making potential, it is absolutely insane, and by purchasing this guide you will have all of these gold making secrets before anyone else. You can also use the code SOLHEIM to get it at a 50% discount, so once again, the cl click the link in the video description and check it out. Oh yeah, one more thing, if you do purchase the guide you will also get all of the future updates for free, always keeping you up to date with the best gold making information at no extra cost. So what does my checklist for Wrath look like? First up, let's talk about what everyone else talks about in their Wrath checklist, the Amani Warbearer. This is a mount from Suleiman which you can obtain by completing the timed ritual event in Suleiman, with, at which point this is looted from the bonus loot chest. Right now in TBC Classic, this is a 100% drop as long as you complete the event before the timer runs out, and is fairly easy to obtain. Well, it's a 100% drop chance, but only one person in a raid actually gets it. In Wrath of the Lich King, Blizzard thought this mount would be way too easy to obtain as people would be level 80, and could steamroll through the raid with 5 people or less, guaranteeing themselves a mount, and therefore they removed it from the loot table. So if they do the same for Wrath Classic, as they did in OG Wrath, then this mount should no longer be obtainable in Wrath Classic, and is therefore an achievement you want to obtain before Wrath comes out, if you care about obtaining this mount. Next up then, let's talk about something I honestly don't see enough people do at the moment, Naxxramas. Yeah, old school classic WoW level 60 Naxxramas. Why would anyone do this? Well, first up, when Wrath comes out, there will be a new version of Naxxramas com coming out, which will also remove the old version of Nox Naxxramas, which means a lot of items obtained from Nax will no longer be obtainable, as the Wrath version brings with it new items and recolors. This means that if you do want to obtain some exclusive transmog items, you might want to get your class tier set from Naxxramas, you have the Corrupted Ashbringer, you have Atiash, and many other really cool items that once again are limited edition. As a quick example of why you might want these, if we do go into Cataclysm after Wrath, there will be a transmog system coming in, making these exclusive items incredibly valuable and seen as high prestige. That is not all though, there's another really exclusive item obtained from Noxramus that will be extremely in demand in Wrath of the Lich King, and that is the Shoulder Enchants obtained from Saffiron. The Might of the Scourge and the Power of the Scourge specifically are absolutely insane Shoulder Enchants, and here's the real kicker, these Shoulder Enchants are usable by level 19 Twinks and are best in slot by far, and they can also be used on heirlooms. In Wrath of the Lich King we get shoulder heirlooms for example, and a lot of people will be looking to enchant their heirlooms to make their leveling experience smoother and faster, and these enchants will definitely help with that, and will be worth a truckload of gold in Wrath Classic. So if you ask me, doing Naxxramas is definitely worth it, try to bring as few people as possible while still making the raid doable, and start hoarding up these shoulder enchants, as well as class tier sets and any other items that you are looking for. Personally, I'm mostly interested in the shoulder enchants because of gold making reasons, and once again, they could be worth a truckload. The enchants themselves are soulbound, 
But before any of you comment on that, you can enchant other people's shoulders by putting them in the will not be traded window, and you can sell these enchants to other people by directly enchanting their shoulder pieces, and you can then charge a fee. As these are exclusive and limited, their price will just keep going up. Next up on my checklist, gold. Wrath is actually quite an expensive expansion, and I've covered this topic in depth in a video of itself, which I will leave a link to in the video description, titled Why You Need Gold in Wrath Classic, but basically you have dual talent specialization, which costs you 1000 gold per character, you have cold weather flying, which will cost you roughly 1000 gold by ca per character, reduced by reputation, you have Dalaran rings, which will cost you around 10,000 gold fully upgraded, and these rings are actually both strong and useful, giving you an easy upgrade every single patch, to give you a decent ring, plus an additional Dalaran teleport. You also have items where the price is set by the community, which also adds up over time. Like, everyone has to buy glyphs, you will need raiding consumables, both in terms of potions and flasks, and most people will need engineering, jewel crafting, blacksmithing or tailoring as their professions on their main character for raiding performance, and all of those are crafting professions, which will cost you a decent sum of gold to skill up. Personally, I would say you want roughly 25,000 gold per character that you plan to actively raid with, and the more you have, the better off you are. Now, let's go through a couple of quick fire things to get done before Wrath comes out. If you're an alchemist, do your alchemy quest in Shatrath to choose your mastery. These masteries are still relevant in Wrath, and for transmuting, being a transmute master will greatly accelerate your profit from transmuting. If you're a druid and you haven't done your flight form quest yet, start doing it now. It will take you about an hour or two depending on your standing. There's some flying back and forth and it ends with you doing Setha calls, which also requires lower city reputation to obtain the key to do it on heroic, as you do need to do it on heroic. Last but not least, Wrath of the Lich King introduces the achievement system, as well as mount tabs and pet tabs, so if you're a collector or achievement hunter, you can start working on these things right now in the game itself, specifically mounts and pets, and even if you're not a collector yourself, you can make gold by selling tradable pets to others that are either collectors or achievement hunters, just as an example. Just make sure the pets you buy are actually tradable, as caging pets was not introduced until way later, I think Mist of Pandaria, so that is a whole different topic for a different time. Actually, last but not least on my prep list, get Sunwell gear, specifically for your leveling spec. If you're a healer looking to level up outside a dungeon group, start working on obtaining some DPS gear to make your leveling experience more smooth. There are also some actual pre-raid best-in-slot items obtainable from Sunwell, like for example Amis of the Convoker for some casters and healers out there, and Slayer's Boots and Slayer's Bracers for rogues, as that 2 set bonus is really really strong, and those are the best pieces according to their gem slots and stats, and I also think the Borderland Pain Grips are technically pre abyss for warriors because of their ARP stat, and once again those gem slots. And that is pretty much it guys, some things to do before Wrath comes out as a checklist of some sort. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Wrath content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.